Welcome back, everyone, to the Lone Star Classic. We are in the final round of the FPO division on the back nine. I'm Sarah Hokum here with Kona Panis. We are at the Met Center. The tournament is brought to you by Zydeco Development, Shepherd Events, Tito's Handmade Vodka, and Innova Champion Discs. Through nine, we have Lisa at 16 under with you right on her tail. Sarah Hokum, 12 under. Own Scoggin, seven. And Steph right behind Own at five down. Some ladies pushing from the second and third cards as well. Holly and Paige are pushing with their uh, minus three and minus four today. Starting with hole 10. Par three, 235 feet. OB on the left and OB on the right. It's going to require a big hyzer for a backhand that skips to the basket or a technical sidearm over the OB the whole time. Steph opting for the safer backhand shot. Ooh, gets a favorable kick off that tree. Throw in her Mustang. I'm also going to opt for a mid over the dangerous left side, which has been getting in my head every time I play this hole. I don't want that early out of bounds. And uh, it's kind of a safe, safe shot, leaving me a putt. Lisa Ooh. also sidearm. I'm surprised she didn't take the rain tee option. She with her Firebird as well, so she'll be putting from 20, 25 feet. Own going high. This needs to sit down. She caught a little bit of a tree, and I think that helped. I think so. Tough putt from that far. Got a little bit of wind. There's always pretty much always wind in Texas. And you cashing your big putt. Jumper. I don't think I made one of those yet. Oh, no, I did. That's the second one. Oh. And now you're only three back from Lisa, maybe putting a little bit of pressure on her. Did I just big putt Lisa Fakus? You did. Oh, my gosh. Oh. And you big put it on. Oh, my goodness. Is Some of our best takes? putters. Lisa cashing in her comebacker for par. Own and Steph tapping out their pars as we head to hole 11. You can see behind all these buildings along this this rocky area, has uh, it's this huge Met, Met Center complex that has lots of room for lots of holes. Hole 11 is a par 4, 500 feet. OB on the left, OB on the right, and a also OB area that pinches off the green right here. So players are going to throw something safe into the fairway and then throw a longer approach shot to try to put it right next to the basket and avoid any of the out-of-bounds. Throw in a shock. Just on a hyzer. Just a layup shot. Try to stay in bounds. Steph throwing her trusty longhorn. Lisa also going to opt for that hyzer line. Oof. Round one, we kind of saw her yank that tee shot as well, so maybe those first few trees are getting in her head, but she gets out just fine for her second approach. It's a pretty intimidating gap from that position. Unless you go from the rain tees. Always nice to have a little bit of flexibility in your approach to a tee. This is pretty far. It is a, this is a pyro dealing with a headwind. Skips a little further than I want. I'm still learning that disc. I just put it in my bag last week. Own going for the backhand hyzer. Going over the out of bounds. Stick in the landing. She'll have a simple look for birdie. It's that Mustang you were talking about. Yeah, she throws this really well. Get a little, got a little skip there. That's pretty hard packed ground by right by the green. 
Lisa with the longest drive out of the group. Going a little deep, but like we keep saying, right in Lisa range. Another jumper here. Much worse attempt. <laughs> Apparently making one didn't give me the confidence to make another. Lisa for birdie. Cashing it in for her birdie. She's, She'll be 17 down. She had a huge, huge uh, shout out from the crowd there as they're kind of walking along the perimeter of the the course because there are no spectators or caddies or support people allowed at this event due to COVID rules. It's a great birdie putt from Steph after her Mustang got that unlucky skip. Owen oh, also cashing in the birdie. Lots of birdies on that hole. On to hole 12. This is a par four, 431 feet. Plays to a left fairway with a hazard area in between that fairway and the island green. So it does play as a hazard, so you take it from where you, where it, the disc lands with an extra stroke rather than, than from where it went out last. Most players are going to be chipping into that first fairway. Steph going for the backhand hyzer shot with her stable longhorn, and that looks like it's in great position. Lisa looking to play a similar line. Green flag. We had a couple spotters out there. That was that gentleman's birthday today. No way. How nice of him to come on his birthday to spot. I think he was super stoked to be out there. Owen with a similar line. Just popping it out there into the middle. And I'm throwing a shock as well. Simple, reliable shot. The meat of this hole is certainly on this approach, and the putting green is extremely tricky. Yeah, Bushnell Rangefinder got your drive at uh, 280 feet. I like the backhand approach here, but that bush is in the way that wide. And that's out of bounds, right? So she is in the hazard, hazard. area. So she'll take it from there, but she'll have to add a stroke to her score. Lisa also looking at the backhand line with her Firebird, but also leaves it short. I'm throwing the shock again, looking for a very little bit of fade. And I was really stoked until that happened. No. I was about to say how perfect. Oh my god! This hole, I practiced this hole so many times on this approach and rarely got one to stick. I really think it plays to the back end, as we'll see Steph do here. Bushnell Rangefinder got her at 223 feet to park this hole for her birdie look. And the basket is just a little bit elevated on those rocks. So if you hit those rocks too, it can kick you down and you can just catch a roll on this sloped green. Owen and Lisa having to... <laughs> Have pitch Lisa, up. <laughs> Lisa playing with fire there. Extremely elevated putt. Cashed it for your birdie, though. What a great putt. I needed that one if I'm going to catch Lisa. Still only three strokes off. Steph also cashing in the birdie, which she got this one the first round as well. One of few birdies on that on this hole. Lisa with the unfortunate bogey, so now we just had a two-stroke mm -hmm. swing. I am on her heels. You know, do you watch scores at all? I don't. Here we are on hole 13, looking at the discbarn.com drone cam. This is 260 feet, par three, up a tunnel. Players are going to throw a, probably a mid, trying to just hit that line and settle close to the basket. Very straightforward, but nothing easy about it. Steph now with two birdies in a row. Hit some trees, but kicked her back in the fairway. Uh, 
I didn't quite turn that as much as I wanted, but there's still a look over there on that right. Lisa, who struggled with this hole in the first round, looking to make an adjustment. Stingray in hand, very straight mid-range. Similar, similar tee shot from the first time. This hole must be kind of getting in her head a little. Yeah, she'll be scrambling for her second shot as own. Hits the line, hits the gap. It's going to leave her a little bit left for a long putt. But she's through the gap. I think that's the main objective here. Absolutely. Steph with a simple approach with her putter. Looks good. Oof. Right there. It was a bullet. <laughs> Lisa in trouble over here. Throwing a roller. Gets a kick, but now she's in the middle. Sky God. Settling right next to the pin. And you're outside the circle looking at your birdie, long birdie putt. Not before Own. Oh. So now Own is now trying to big putt the rest of us. <laughs> well, I guess just me at this point. We'll see. Nice replay. Great putt. Big smile. Mm -hmm. I am actually just inside the circle here. So spin putt. Uh, Great bid, though. You had that weird low ceiling. Yeah, spin putting. I'm working on it. Not my strength, but I get to use it sometimes. I'm going to start cashing those in some at some point. Mm -hmm. We shall see. Stay tuned, folks. All right, Lisa with a bogey, taking her to 15 under. You'll be tapping in your par. You're only a stroke away from taking that first place. And we have, gosh, we don't have a lot of holes left. Five holes, and at least these next two are extremely technical. Big stroke swings. You can see Holly and Paige also pushing up, trying to dethrone Owen and Stephanie. And Lisa and I fighting at the top for that. 10,000 added extra cash from Tito's. Hole 14, par 4, 563 feet. Plays to a straight fairway driver with a backhand off the tee, leaving you about right here, requiring another hyzer backhand to skip into this really guarded green. Anywhere off the fairway here, you are struggling to find a line that can get you where you want to be. Own up first with that great putt. Pushes it a little bit right, but she's getting some local love. And that looks like great position to attack for her second shot. Steph with a T-bird. Getting the good fade right to the middle. Bushnell ranging that at 261 feet. That'll leave her 302 to the pin. I am not comfortable with the backhand on this hole, and I turn my melon vanish over a little bit. Similar to the first round, but I feel like you got a more favorable roll out to the fairway. Yeah, I had not figured out how to play this hole yet. Maybe next year. Lisa pushing it a little right, but she's in the middle. And you got a tricky approach here. Well, that's a garbage line. I was really debating about the backhand, but it's again a technical backhand. Turned a little more than I thought, but left me relatively in the middle, not tucked left, so I'm okay with that. Yeah, it looks like you'll have an open look at the basket. Yeah, that was, it looked like Lisa's Halo Wraith again. I feel like when she throws that dish, she feels like she has to put a lot of mustard behind it. So probably why she threw it low. 
own sneaking past a few trees. Ooh, and that is like death over there. There's so many little trees to navigate. It's going to be very difficult for Own to get up and down to save her par at this point. Steph on her second shot. That trusty Longhorn fade. Beautiful. Wow. She'll have a tap in birdie. Lisa with her third looking for a big skip to try to save her par. And she gets it. What a shot. Owen is in trouble over here. This is scramble golf mode, so maybe looking to skip something up. That's not too bad. It's in own range. Got a long look here for Birdie. Not a bad bid. I bogeyed it the first round out here, so um, I'm going to be okay with this. Improvement. This par thing. Own for par. No question. Wow. Get a replay on that. Look at that jump putt. Full extension. Ain't no thing. Beautiful par save from Own. All smiles. I love it. I mean, how could you not smile when you're banging putts like that? Maybe that's the secret to her mental game. Just bang putts. Mm -hmm. Make smiles. Lisa also stoked to finish off with a par there. Not losing any more ground. And Steph with a birdie, playing it like a pro. She must live here. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen Widboom is the only other um, person to get the birdie on that hole today. I just want to send a huge thank you out to all of our Innova throwers that have supported the Tour Series program. Every player on Team Star and Champion has a special signature disc available at the Innova Factory store and at retailers around the world. Huge part of what keeps us able to do what we love and be professional disc golfers out there on tour. So thank you so much for supporting it. On to hole 15, par four, 491 feet, requiring a backhand hyzer off the tee, landing in the left area, and then you're gonna throw another approach to the basket. Obviously there's water on that right that's gonna be OB, and then the rocks to the right behind the basket are also gonna be OB on that plateau. Very tricky approach shot. Steph up first with that nice birdie on the last hole. Throwing that long horn, not looking to test that OB at all. Great placement on the flat ground. Oh, I'm doing, trying to do the same thing. A little low, but she gets that favorable skip to the left on the flat ground as well. This hole really forces the backhand, so I'm throwing a vanish on a hyzer, looking for it to just fade left. Oh, no. But it drops. A big dummy. I didn't realize there was so much of a tailwind. I was really happy with that shot, even though it didn't work out. And I was about to say, it looked like a great hyzer, but yeah, when the wind comes into play. Lisa also throwing the hyzer and making the same mistake. I'm kind of glad she didn't learn from my shot, but also that's really unfortunate because it's really not that difficult to put this shot in the fairway. So she's probably kicking herself, but as me being the only one really pushing her at this point, she probably had to breathe a sigh of relief as I threw it into the OB um, first. So she's kind of out of range for the par save with that, you know, she's like 60 foot, feet left. I'm still hoping to get a par save, but 
throw a really bad shot and also similarly left without much of a look to save the par. We have a really nice crowd out here to the right of the basket off the property, so it's COVID safe. That is oh. also where the Tito's tent is. Oh, and there's a Tito's tent right there. Own oh, with a beautiful backhand hyzer skipping up to the pin. Just parking it. Steph also with the opportunity to get this birdie. Going standstill. So she had a great drive off the tee, leaving her with somewhat of a tester, but we'll see if she can make that birdie. Lisa just looking to lay this up. Tito tent looking popping. The crowd gets a little bigger as the day goes on, and that wind is just ripping. Steph for her birdie. Yeah, the tailwind has dropped it. And own with the birdie. <laughs> Bowing to the crowd. <laughs> Lots of support from the folks out there. And uh, yeah, Paige and Ellen were the only two to get this one in the round today outside of own. So playing as one of the more difficult holes. You and Lisa are still a stroke within each other. See how this shakes out. Hole 16 is par 3, 255 feet. It is an island hole, but plays as a hazard. It's relatively open, but there is some wind. So if you put it up high, it may have some wind play that you didn't expect. Own looking like she's throwing her tour series Leopard th Halo Leopard 3. That's an own range. I can see why it's her tour series. Steph also with a great shot. Wow. Just parking it. Makes life easy. Throwing a pyro. We need to get it over a little bit more than that. But how about a headwind putt? And Lisa, our leader, looking to maintain this lead by cashing in this birdie. wide put it a little wide she'll have a long birdie putt Ooh. wow that was so close from so far to put the pressure on trying to catch her That wind is just messing with me, but probably not own. Let's see. Cash money. Great birdie for own, moving her to 10 down. And I'm wondering if Lisa knows you are as close as you are, only a stroke back. I don't know if she's a, I kind of feel like she's a score checker. <laughs> I faked out Steph right there. She was pulling her disc out, and I was like, ah! Got <laughs> And she's her. like, why did you do that? <laughs> oh, I was just having fun. Uh, hole 17, par four, 534 feet. First shot, you want it to land about here. You can throw a backhand hyzer or the sidearm to get there. And then the next shot is about 250 feet, navigating these trees in the middle and the OB Creek on the left and OB on the right. This is an open hole, but the OB certainly tightens it up. Own with her champion shrike. Looking to turn it over and just threw it into the ground. Not very happy with that shot. Steph going with her destroyer. Also a little bit low. We have a tailwind at this point. It's probably a cross tailwind. I'm throwing a photon, looking for a big fade. Boop, 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 boop. 
And now looks like it's in prime position. Got to do something here to catch Miss Lisa. Lisa with her trusty halo turn looking to put it somewhere in the center of the fairway. Coming in nicely over on that left side where she likes it to offer the hyzer line into the pin. Owen with a lot left on the bone. Trying to just put this in the fairway. And that looks like great position to attack for her third shot. Steph going over the out of bounds with her long horn. Does this have the distance? And she did. Oh, but she went out of bounds on the left side. Yeah, so, so difficult on that. that. That's such a dangerous shot to try to go there. I wish, I'm sure she wishes she had a sidearm for this particular shot. Lisa as well, going way over the out of bounds. Barely skipping in, but she's got to look about 20 feet Oof. for her birdie. You're looking for the forehand route. I personally like this shot. I also leave it a little bit more hyzer than I want, but it gets up there. I've got to look for birdie. It's a putt off. <laughs> oh, and going over the out of bounds as well, leaving it a little bit short. She'll have a long putt to save par. And Stephanie also in recovery mode from that out of bounds lie. Pitching up, she'll take a bogey. Get it. Great bid. I mean, that's a nerve-wracking putt with that out, out of bounds so close behind the basket. Lisa with a rare miss to try to extend her lead, leaving the door open. Whew. Wow. All right. So we're going to see a tie between Lisa and Sarah going into hole 18. Doesn't get any more exciting than this. I, of course, don't know that we're tied. I'm just trying to get as many birdies as possible. Yeah, you're just trying to play your best. There's not usually a decision to make. If there was a decision to make, I maybe would check, but... I'm going to play this hole the way I'm playing it regardless. So, hole 18, our final hole, par 4, 503 feet. It places a double island hazard hole. So, the first island, the end of it is about here. And then there's a hazard zone between there and the island green, which is roughly 50 feet in diameter. You have the tee to put the pressure on. I'm throwing it hard out left, just looking for it to skip and stay in the middle. And it doesn't. I did not know that I went into hazard off the tee. I thought I threw a good shot. Lisa throwing the hyzer to the middle as well. She'll be safe in the middle of the fairway for her approach to the island green. Own oh, also opting for that backhand. Sawing it off a little bit, but she'll be safe. Yeah, you don't really need to get too far up this fairway to give yourself access to the birdie. Steph also throwing the conservative shot with her longhorn. The hyzer to the center. And looking to approach this other island green, pushing that right side, but just enough to give her an easy putt to finish. Beautiful shot for her birdie look. Stephanie and Owen are also battling here for third. And Owen's got to put this close. Well, maybe not so close, but in own range. That was her rock three. That's a little short. That's a tester with Steph only 10, 15 feet away. Now, Lisa's got to put this on the green. Doesn't want to skip, and it doesn't. 
Did she hit a little bit of something there? Nah, that must have just been the dirt. I'm throwing from the hazard zone with a pyro, trying to save my par. In a beautiful approach. Own. Ah, leaves it short, very uncharacteristic. You so Steph, swing. cashing in the birdie, ties own for third place. And Lisa and I, well, we're going to tap out our putts, mine for par, and hers for birdie to take home the big money. Our Lone Star Classic champion, Lisa Fakus. Huge shout out to Lisa. She's been, um, you know, trying really hard for a win, and it's great seeing her win on some of her home turf. Let's check out our lead card finish. We have Lisa 15 under, Sarah 14 right behind her. Owen and Steph battling it out for that third spot, tying for third place. What a weekend, and big shout out to Tito's um, for making this the biggest payout that Lisa has ever received. And also, she earned more than the top MPO guy. Yeah, shout out to Innova Champion Disc for putting this event on, for supporting women's and men's disc golf. And Holly and Paige coming in with a hot round at minus seven. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune into the Lone Star Classic next year. It's going to be bigger and better. Thank you to GK Pro for covering the FPO division. <laughs>